We're going to solve these four examples of using the integral test to determine if a series converges or diverges. There are chapters in the description so you can skip around the video as you please. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing the integral test, but let's do a quick review. If f is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x at least 1, and each term of a sequence a n is equal to f of n, then the series summing up those terms a n and the integral of f of x from 1 to infinity either both converge or they both diverge. Note that the terms of the series a n being equal to f of n imply that the terms of the series are also positive and decreasing. So in each example, we will take the term of our series, turn it into a function, check that the function is positive, continuous, and decreasing over the relevant interval, which is usually x being at least one, but occasionally might be different. Once we know we can apply the integral test, we'll go ahead and perform the integration. Let's walk through the solution for example one. To apply the integral test to this series, the sum of the terms n over n squared plus 1, we begin by verifying that all necessary conditions are met. First, consider the corresponding function, f of x equals x over x squared plus 1. Certainly, this function is positive and continuous for all x greater than or equal to 1. Then, to determine if the function is decreasing, we'll take the derivative, which requires the quotient rule. So we'll have the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, that's 1 times x squared plus 1, which we see there, minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x, multiplied by the numerator, which we see there, divided by the denominator squared. Doing some simplification, we see that this is negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. And this is negative for x greater than 1. When x equals 1, this is equal to 0. But that doesn't change the fact that the function is indeed decreasing on the entire interval where x is at least 1. Even though the derivative is 0 when x equals 1, it's still the case that if you increase x at all from x equals 0, the function's value will decrease because the derivative immediately becomes negative. So yes, the function is decreasing on the relevant interval. All the conditions are met, so we can calculate the integral of this function from 1 to infinity to determine the behavior of the series. To integrate x over x squared plus 1, we're just doing a straightforward u substitution where u equals x squared plus 1 and du equals 2x dx. So that's why we see the natural log of u, x squared plus 1, but then we have to multiply by 1 half, because if we took the derivative of this function, we'd get 1 over x squared plus 1 like we want, but we'd also get 2x from the chain rule. The derivative of the inside function is 2x, so we would get 2x, but we only have 1x. So we have to divide by 2, or multiply by 1 half. We're evaluating this integral from 1 to b and taking the limit as b goes to infinity. Plugging in those bounds and taking out the 1 half, we have the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of b squared plus 1 minus, plugging the 1 in, the natural log of 2. The natural log of b squared plus 1 as b goes to infinity diverges to infinity, and subtracting log 2 does not change that. So this integral diverges to infinity, hence the corresponding series also diverges. Here is our next example. We'll apply the integral test to this series. We're adding up the terms 1 over 5n plus 2 from n equals 1 to infinity. We begin by considering the corresponding function, f of x equals 1 over 5x plus 2. Certainly, if x is at least 1, this function is positive and continuous. Then, to establish that it's decreasing, we'll take the derivative. This is 5x plus 2 to the negative 1 
So we take the derivative using the power rule and get negative 5 times 5x plus 2 to the negative 2. A little bit of chain rule going on there as well. And certainly if x is the least 1, then this is going to be negative because the denominator, this is a denominator because its power is negative, the denominator will be positive, and the numerator will be negative. So yes, the function is decreasing, it's positive, it's continuous, so we're all good, we can take an integral now. So we know the integral test applies, so let's integrate this function from 1 to infinity. The integral of 1 over 5x plus 2 is just 1 fifth natural log of 5x plus 2. Again, taking the derivative of this would certainly produce the 5x plus 2 in the denominator, but the chain rule would also give us a factor of 5. We don't have a factor of 5 here, that's why we multiplied by 1 fifth in the integral to cancel that out. This is going from 1 to b as b goes to infinity. Take the 1 fifth out of the limit, and then we're going to have, plugging the b in, the limit of the natural log of 5b plus 2 as b goes to infinity minus the natural log of 7. This looks very much like the previous problem, and again, this natural log will be going to infinity, because as b goes to infinity, so does 5b plus 2. Hence, the integral diverges, and so the corresponding series does as well. We plugged in 1, by the way, 5 times 1 plus 2, to get that natural log of 7. I didn't point that out. Hopefully you noticed that. So again, we have a divergent integral, hence a divergent series. Let's move on to the next example. Let's apply the integral test to this series, the sum of the terms 3 to the negative n from n equals 1 to infinity. We begin by considering the corresponding function, f of x equals 3 to the negative x. And this is certainly positive and continuous for x at least 1, because it's just 1 over 3 to the power of some positive number. That's always going to be positive. Let's take the derivative to see if it's decreasing. To take the derivative, hopefully you recall, we don't use the power rule. I'll put a link in the description to my lesson going over how to take derivatives of functions like this. Perhaps you do recall, it works like this. The derivative of a constant to the power of the variable, negative x, is going to be the natural log of that base, the natural log of 3, times 3 to the negative x, and then multiply by the derivative of that power, so multiply by negative 1. And natural log of 3 is positive, 3 to the negative x is positive, there's a negative though, so certainly this is negative, and so f of x is decreasing. Then we can proceed with the integral. The integral of 3 to the negative x from 1 to infinity is 3 to the negative x, but then we have to multiply by negative 1 over the natural log of 3. We have to multiply by negative 1 because if we took the derivative, we would get a negative from the power because of the chain rule, and so we need a negative to cancel that out because our integrand is not negative. We also see how taking the derivative of this function produces a natural log of 3 factor, so we have to divide that out as well. This is from 1 to b as b goes to infinity. Plugging in b, we have negative 1 over the natural log of 3 and moving this negative power into the denominator so that its power is positive, we have 3 to the b in the denominator. Plus, because minus on the lower bound, we're subtracting this, when we plug in 1, we have 1 over 3 times the natural log of 3. We've plugged 1 into the power, and of course, we've moved it into the denominator. Since we're subtracting that negative, that's why we have the plus, and this limit, as b goes to infinity, well, clearly this is just going to go to zero, because the denominator is getting very, very large, we're adding some finite number to it, so yes, this is going to converge to just 1 over 3 log 3, because this is zero, and since the integral converges to some finite value, so too does the series. We don't know what it converges to. There's no reason to believe that the series converges to this. This doesn't tell us what the series converges to, but it does tell us that the series converges. In fact, we didn't need the integral test here. This is just a geometric series where the ratio is one third, so you could quickly determine what it converges to. But we can use the integral test even when it's not necessary because it's fun. All right, last one. Apply the integral test to this series, 1 over n times the square root of log n. In this case, the natural log of 1 is 0. We can't have that in the denominator, so n is going to start at 2 and go to infinity. 
So we consider the corresponding function f of x equals 1 over x times the square root of ln x, and this is certainly positive and continuous for x at least 2. If x is at least 2, then x is positive, natural log is positive, and so we just have to take a derivative now. The natural log function, recall, is negative for x less than 1. However, if the natural log was negative, we'd have bigger problems than just the log being negative because we'd have a negative and a square root. We're not interested in that. So, again, this is positive and continuous for the relevant x values. Let's go ahead and take the derivative. There's quite a bit of action going on with the derivative here. I would think of it as x times the square root of the natural log of x to the power of negative 1. And so to take the derivative, we are using the chain rule and the power rule. Using the power rule, we get that negative 1 power out front as a factor, and then reduce the power by 1. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's just going to be product rule f prime g plus g prime f. I'm not going to really worry about that because that's not going to produce any negatives. So we have this, which is positive, multiplied by this, which is also positive because x is at least 2, and we have a negative out front. So for sure, this is negative. f of x is decreasing, so we can proceed with the integral test. So we're integrating this function from 2 to infinity. Recall that the series starts at 2, so our integral will start at 2 as well. Now, since we have a natural log of x in our integrand, and we also have a 1 over x, this is a great time to use u substitution. Let u equal the natural log of x, then du equals 1 over x dx, 1 over x dx. That's going to be taken care of by du. So then what will be left is 1 over the square root of u. 1 over the square root of u is just u to the negative 1 half, so we have the integral of u to the negative 1 half. Then we'll adjust the bounds for u. If x equals 2, then u equals the natural log of 2. So that's our upper, excuse me, our lower bound. As x tends towards infinity, so too does u, because u is log x. So u also tends towards infinity. Let's just go ahead and put b as the upper bound and write it as a limit now. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity. We're integrating from log 2 to b. Now we integrate this with the reverse power rule. Increase the power by 1 to positive half, and then divide by the new power. Dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2, so we have 2u to the 1 half, from log 2 to b, as b goes to infinity. Plugging in b, we have the limit as b goes to infinity of 2 times b to the 1 half, which is the square root of b. And plugging in the natural log of 2, we're subtracting this, we have 2 times natural log of 2 to the 1 half which is 2 times the square root of the natural log of 2. So we're subtracting a finite number from this, and this clearly goes to infinity. 2 times the square root of b, as b goes to infinity, that's just infinity, and subtracting a finite number does not change that. Hence, the integral diverges, and so too does the corresponding series. And that's how to use the integral test to determine if a series converges or diverges. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description. If you want more practice with the integral test, join Wrath of Math as a member to get access to exclusive videos, including one with a whole bunch of integral test problems. Link in the description. Thanks for considering. I'll see you next time. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm a V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any. Anytime that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need